Dakota, so you did. All right, Act 5, Scene 1, Outside Fight. Ross sits upon the ground with a bloody knife in one hand and a hunk of hair in the other. He's covered in blood and dirt. What cow, boy? That vernal smart ass had the nerve to call me grandpa. But he learned his lesson. Yes, he learned it well. I teach the best. He won't forget. How dare he mock my age? How dare he? I'm not even grey. Came for Lady Fife, and I was in the right, for King and Queen commanded me. But then that egg, fry of treachery, and stud of deference showed flippancy. How dare he mock my age? I'm still as strong and potent as I've ever been. I have a boner now. <laughs> How dare he? But he learned his lesson. Yes, he did. He learned it when I slid my knife across his throat and slew him with the blade that took his mother's life. I teach the best. And now I must from faith to tell the king I murdered son and wife. Ross stands clumsily, shakes off the fog of murder, and stumbles off stage. Nice job, Charlie. Scene two, Flores, Gruach consults with her chambermaid. Chambermaid is Michelle, is it not? And people really do that. I mean, talk while they're sleeping? Yes, and sometimes walk. Incredible. Are, are they by demons held? Oh no, it's just a thing some people do. And you want me to tell his doctor you've been talking in your sleep? And walking too. And walking too. What do I tell him you've been saying in these walking dreams? Don't tell him anything. Just say you can't repeat what I've revealed. He'll have to see and hear with his own eyes and ears. For if you make these claims, you fear a revival from the Queen. And don't forget to say the part where I awake and write a letter every night. Godspeed, and bring that doctor back this eve. Exit chambermaid. My desperation leads to this. I've killed too many. And I've made a madman of my husband. Now I'm double crossing him. But something has to give before he tries to kill a child again. Before I kill a friend again. Before at every crime and lie deprived me of my very life. It has to end. And soon. When Duncan's kin and countrymen discovered that their king was murdered by their king, they'll turn on him. And while they're distracted, I will slip away to scone. Sit upon the tannish stone and claim the throne of Scotland. Maiden Queen. To set his tra tragic fall in motion, I will feign confession in my walking sleep and implicate my husband as the chief of this conspiracy. My innocence will rest between my legs and on my chest. For how would he, a man and king, be led by machinations from a woman's head? That's it, grew up. James, is this your take on the unsex me speech? No, that was earlier when she says ungender me. Okay. Uh, okay, so it is in here. I just I missed it. Sorry. Yeah, it's way, way, way earlier. Okay, good. Uh, scene three, Forrest, Macbeth parlays with his physician. Physician, Oliver. She said that. Yes. What else? She seemed to be confessing to the murder of the king. Fantastic dreams. <laughs> what next? She said your best friend, Bancho, was by Thank hired Thank assassins. Thank oh, sorry. She said your best friend, Banquo, was by hired assassins killed. She spilled the beans. What more? The Lord of Fife, he has a wife. Where is the lady now? She's safe at home. What's she to do with this? I bet that despot killed her. He might still kill me too if I don't get the hell away from here. 
Did Gruach mention Lady Fife when she was talking nonsense in her sleep? She did, but nothing of significance. I see. Do you have further questions, sire? I have an operation to attend. You're free to go, but on your way, relay a message to my lazy porter. Send for Ross again. I have a job for him. Exit physician, Macbeth takes a small portrait of Gruach from a table or desk and stares at it. Alas, I knew that it would come to this. It's over. And I'll have to kill you. But I never will forget the day we met. That priceless look upon your face before I set ablaze your gay ex-husband. Nor will I forget the way you held me as... As I held a dagger to your throat and said we'd marry. Well, the first time we had sex, you pretended not to like it. <laughs> if there's one thing I can do, it's please a woman. <laughs> anyway, you've made your bed, and ere the morning sun evaporates, the dew upon the meadow, you'll be dead. Enter Ross. My lord, the siege! It didn't go as planned. We have a bigger problem on our hands. Scene four, Gruach's inner chamber. Gruach packs her things, enter Ross. My lady, wherefore art thou packing? Are you going somewhere? Mind your business, Ross. This is my business, madam. Say your prayers. Ross draws a dagger. Is that a dagger I see? It is. It isn't very long. It does the trick. Oh, would you care to test that theory? Bitch! Ross lunges at Gruach with a dagger in his right hand. Gruach steps to his right side, turns as he continues lunging, and catches his right arm with her left hand extending his arm forward. As his weight shifts and Ross loses balance, Gruach twists his hand in the opposite direction, sending him to the floor and taking the knife in the process. Ross lies on the floor helpless. Gruach sits on him and places the edge of the dagger at his throat. God's dick! He taught you the fate like this! My mum. And for the record, you're the bitch. Touche. What next? You're going to kill me now. Why should I let you live? You came to take my life because the tyrant told you to. He's still the king of Scotland. And I'm still his Dane. His Dane? You knave. If he but for a moment thought that killing you would make him look more manly. He would free your pace and put it on a pike outside his gate. I fear to leave this place and fear to stay, yet I must flee. The gold I would have made from offing you was going to pay my way. So how much would he pay you? Not that much. The gig is partly pleasure. You're the cunt who lied to me about the wife of Fife. It doesn't matter. She deserved to die. For what? Because she wanted bloody peace? She told you that? They were her dying words. And maybe she deserved your anger. But her son did not. What happened to the boy? Things got a little... out of hand. They what? Rock I swear... Dagger I, mean... I swear... I didn't mean to do it, but he called me old, and I just lost control. You lost control, and what? I gutted him. You fucking dick. Brock raises the dagger for a few tense moments before tossing it aside. I did this. I'm to blame. Brock gets off of Ross. Ross struggles to his feet. She kicks him just because. Avoid me. Go collect your money. Come tomorrow, he'll think you murdered me. Exit Ross. It could have worked. It should have worked. 
was by all accounts the perfect plan. Except the perfect plan depended on a man. Oh, what the devil am I saying? I'm to blame for all that went awry. So it was I that set this ship adrift and I am thus responsible for steering it. I thought to use chicanery to change these beasts to human, but I ended up a greater monster than the worst of them. Macduff's beloved and his son are dead. And Banquo has a dozen gashes in his hair, so he had lived. He'll, no, so Fleab lived, he'll never free the murder of his father from his dreams. The King of Scotland lost his life upon his bed, and who knows who will perish next? For he who runs this kingdom has become unstable, killing every Scot who comes between him and his plot. I'm not his wife, I'm just an unbound fibre to be tied. It's come to this. My husband even wants me dead. And I deserve it. But I'll be the judge and executioner. And I will leave this mortal body when I shoot. Your aunt picks up the day. I made a vow to stay with him until I took my final breath. This dagger and its partner death shall free me from that man. Who stabs herself and dies. Enter Macbeth. Tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. The rent is due or I have to see the dentist or etc. Slow fade out. Applause. Author! Author! <laughs> that that last line is a total ad lib, so you can just say whatever you want on the, the parenthetical. Yeah, we'll talk about it another or now or another time, but I'm I was trying to think of what